Yes, now they're the old singing, old dancing brother duo who are teaming up to use their musical powers for good. Please welcome Nathan and Jake Carter. Hello, boys. How's it going? Hi, guys. Thanks for having us on. Oh, Merry well, listen, Christmas Eve. Listen, it, you look, it looks like a Christmas card, doesn't it, their house? Beautiful. You know, I, look, we are, you know, we're still a good six weeks out from Christmas, lads. So, you know, what's with the decorations going up early, Nathan? Tell us what, why they're there. We've been recording a Christmas special for BBC uh, today and the last couple of days, so we've had trees up and lights up and parcels wrapped and fake snow and everything. Fake snow the lot. Yeah, so it's been good fun, but we are going to be fed up of Christmas by the time December comes in. <laughs> well, it's six weeks and then you leave them up for another couple of weeks, you know, up to the 7th of January. It looks, it looks like a Christmas card for the milk tray men, doesn't it? Oh, there we go. All because the lady or gentleman loves Nathan and Jay Carter. Get in on that, lads. Uh, listen, Jake, um, Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without Panto, but we're, we're very worried this year because of all that's going on with the pandemic. So n normally you do Panto. So w will you be leaving your Prince Charming tights in, in, in the sh in, like in, in the shelf on the shelf this year? No, no. Um, it was very doubtful, but I'm very happy to say I am doing a pantomime this year. I'm back with the Cheerios Panto Gang. Um, and I can't say too much other than that I will be playing the role of Peter Pan in Peter Pan. Um, and I'll have my green tights on, which is going to be lovely. Um, but it's, it's not fully announced yet, but all the details will be coming out at the end of the week on panto.ie, which is where you can find all the information. That's oh, brilliant. no, you can't. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, I'm so sorry. Nathan, has he, been, has he been prancing around the house in the tights already? In rhythm, that was so beautiful. It was beautiful. GA royalty and former Dublin All-Star Alan Brogan is going to be chatting to us because Martin's back. We had Bernard. Yay. We had to have another Brogan on. He was I like, how dare Bernard you? Last week. How I was dare disgusted. You? He's going to be talking to us why he's going the extra mile for a good cause and if Mayo might sidestep Dublin to All-Ireland victory. Oh. Uh, plus, journalist and podcaster Elizabeth Day tells us how selling her wedding dress led to the creation of her internationally renowned podcast, How to Fail. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you want to stay in touch with us throughout the show, here's how you can do it. You can get us on WhatsApp 083 360 60 or text us by sending the word 6 to 53131. Pop us an email to 6 at virginmedia.ie or find 6 O'Clock Show on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and use the hashtag 6VMTV. Yes, now they're the old singing, all dancing brother duo who are teaming up to use their musical powers for good. Please welcome Nathan and Jake Carter. Hello, boys. How's it going? Hi, guys. Thanks for having us on. Oh, Merry Christmas Eve. Listen, it you look it looks like a Christmas card, doesn't it? Their house. Beautiful. You know, I, look, we are yeah, you know, we're still a good six weeks out from Christmas, lads. So, you know, what's with the decorations going up early, Nathan? Tell us what, why they're there. We've been recording a Christmas special for BBC uh, today and the last couple of days. So we've had trees up and lights up and parcels wrapped and fake snow and, and everything. Fake snow the lot. Yeah, so it's been good fun, but we are going to be fed up of Christmas by the time December comes in. <laughs> well, it's six weeks and then you leave them up for another couple of weeks, you know, up to the 7th of January. It looks, it looks like a Christmas card for the milk tray men, doesn't it? Oh, there we go. All because the lady or gentleman loves Nathan and Jay Carter. Get in on that, lads. Uh, listen, Jake, um, Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without Panto, but we're, we're very worried this year because of all that's going on with the pandemic. So n normally you do Panto. So w will you be leaving your Prince Charming tights in, in, in the sh in, like in, in the shelf on the shelf this year? No, no. Um, it was very doubtful, but I'm very happy to say I am doing a pantomime this year. I'm back with the Cheerios Panto Gang. Um, and I can't say too much other than that I will be playing the role of Peter Pan in Peter Pan. Um, and I'll have my green tights on, which is going to be lovely. Um, but it's, it's not fully announced yet, but all the details will be coming out at the end of the week on panto.ie, which is where you can find all the information. That's oh, brilliant. no, you can't. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Nathan, has he been, has he been prancing around the house in the tights already? 
I haven't seen him, to be honest. Uh, maybe he does it in his bedroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and don't... what happens in there is his business. There. Uh, now, Christmas, you know, it's a season for giving. And the thing is, Jake, yourself and Nathan, you've teamed up together to offer one fam, uh, fan an incredibly intimate gig. What are you doing? Yeah, we decided that we wanted to raise a bit of money for Christmas and to do a gig because we haven't done any gigs this year at all. So uh, we teamed up with Make-A-Wish Foundation in Northern Ireland in the UK and in Southern Ireland as well. So um, our idea was to basically raffle ourselves to the highest bidder. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do uh, a gig for someone in their house or in their garden, obviously COVID dependent. Mm -hmm. If we can't do it in the house, we'll do it outside and you can bring the neighbours. And basically, when I said highest bidder, it's not the highest bidder. It's, uh, it's only five euro, 50 a yeah. ticket. And you go to fortunecompetitions.com to purchase your tickets and the, the winner is picked at random. And we're going to do a gig for someone in their house this Christmas. Uh, could be for a, a birthday party or a wedding. You know, the person can use it whenever they want. If they want it at Christmas, they can get it at Christmas. But basically, we'll be just going along and singing a few songs for anyone who wins. Uh, we've sold about 1,200 tickets so far. I'm hoping to sell over 2,000. And all the money is going direct to make a wish. And uh, it'll make it'll go a long way, hopefully, to, to, to help the charity. As we all know, the minute charities are really struggling. Yeah. Just because they can't fundraise like they normally do, you know, so. That's a, it's a, it's a great thing to do. It's a beautiful thing, but when you said you can use it whenever, you know, for a wedding, there's people there going, I'll get them to the wedding, pretending that they're singing, and I'll just have one of them up at the altar. It'd be fine. <laughs> just two of them, I'll toss a coin, I'll, I'll see. Tell them. Yeah, but that it's is, of course, as long as you guys are free on that particular date. So, of course, and of course. Well, that's it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hopefully, now we, we'll be back gigging soon enough, so it's all dependent upon dates. But, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to do something for one of our fans, whoever wins, and also to raise money for a great cause. Obviously, Make-A-Wish, the Make-A-Wish Foundation is an amazing charity, uh, and they, they bring, you know, dreams to life for, for some kids that are very sick, which is a great thing to do. So it's, it's um, we're really happy to be, to be yeah. able to help. I've had way. some personal experience with Make-A-Wish just through some sick children coming to the shows and to see the, the happiness it brings them just for yeah. a day, just so they can forget about all their troubles. Uh, it's worth any price, you know. So um, we're hoping to raise as much money as possible yeah. and uh, make some people happy. Yeah, it's an absolutely lovely thing. And while you're there, Jake, you might be able to knock up an old extension as well because it would appear that the Carter brothers, here we go, the Carter <laughs> brothers are very at home on a building site. What's going on here, Jake? Yeah, well, our dad is a builder, so uh, we didn't inherit the, the building trade, but Nathan's been having a, a bit of a, an extension slash for a man cave slash studio being built at the minute. Uh, and as we haven't been gigging, um, we've been out there doing our best. We don't know how long it's going to stay standing, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the moves, with the moves that were going on with the drill in the hand, I'd be a bit worried about that. But there was more YMCA than actual building. It was wasn't a beautiful it? There thing. A few hand move, yeah. That was going on, but it does. It feels like I have known the Carters for years. That you've been around for so long, but like wagon wheel. Nathan, like it's it's what is it? Less than a decade, less than a decade ago, and now. You've got kind of a great assist. Look at that there. Look at the wagon wheel is done. Oh, I love it. I love it. But it's been a whole decade since Wagon Wheel, and now you've got kind of a best of your greatest hits album. Are you not a bit young to be doing a greatest hits album? Well, I'm actually 75, really. I just walked this in. My record company earlier this year just said, You've been 10 years on the road where we do a bit of a a collection of songs from the last 10 years. And I said it would as long as I could write and record some new music for it. So um, we, we stuck together 20 tracks from the last uh, 10 years, but, but I also put on four brand new songs. Uh, one that I wrote and recorded with a band called The High Kings, uh, Made the Road Rise to Meet You, that one was called. A single that I released earlier this year, Sarah Jane, and a brand new song which I've written um, in the last few months, which is on the album, and it's a, a new single that I'm going to release called Wings to Fly. So, uh, new album, it only was released the other day, and um, decided to release it obviously this week because all the record shops in Ireland are closed. So, what a great week! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Timing. It's all about timing, lads. It's they can, all about... can pre-order. It'll be fine. It'll, it'll get there for Christmas. Yeah, listen, let's take a listen to that song, Wings to Fly, because there's a lovely story behind it. This is Wings to Fly. Now you are an angel flying high. You left us here on earth alone to cry. Memories of you will never die. For you gave me wings, the wings to fly. It is a lovely song uh, with a gorgeous sentiment. Nathan, you need to tell us the story behind this song. Uh, yeah, well, at the start of this year, before all the madness kicked in with COVID, I had a bit of a blow. My, one of my best friends passed away, a guy called Nicky James. Um, he was a mentor, really, since I was a kid. He used to bring me on stage. He was a singer as well. Uh, he took me to record my first album um, and helped pay for it as well and never took a penny. And basically got me started when I left school gigging and, and um, put me on the road. And he passed away suddenly. And I kind of lost faith in music for a while. I, I did stop singing and playing music for a few months. And then I did a writing session one day and decided to write a song in his memory. Uh, so this song, Wings to Fly, is all about uh, him, really, and it's dedicated to, to his life. But, uh, but uh, I've had so many um, amazing messages off people since that uh, can obviously relate to the song just through people they've lost, family and friends and so forth. I mean, I wrote it for Nicky, but um, I've been so touched with the messages I've got from people relating to, to their friends that they've lost as well. And what a beautiful thing to have, you know, at this time of year and also for the year that's certainly in it. We've all lost people in ways that are just horrid and not being able to commemorate them properly. Now, thank God you didn't lose the will to perform because you are going to perform for us at the end of the show. Nathan, what are you singing? Yeah, well, one of, the, one of the tracks off that new album, May the Road Rise, uh, Jake was just laughing because I recorded it, um, pre-recorded it this afternoon just because we're doing this show tonight. But um, <laughs> I had to angle the camera because there's literally presents and rubbish everywhere <laughs> underneath <laughs> The but a mess. But a it looks all nice and tidy, you know. <laughs> you if I had it all the camera, we would have just seen a load you, of you mess. You would have thought you know? that Jake, you know, with his drill, could have put up a few shelves to put the presents on. Well, I was hoping that if it was if it was going to be live, Jake would just throw the tights on for us. But that's unfortunately <laughs> not going to happen. Nathan will be singing at the end of the show. And just to let you know, to win a private concert with the Carter Brothers, go to fortunecompetitions.com forward slash make a wish. That closes 4th of December. Nathan's new single, Wings to Fly, and also... Uh, the best first 10 years are out now. And keep an eye on panto.ie for more information on Jake as Peter Pan in this year's Cheerios. Panto, my God, I need a breath after that. Nathan and Jake Carter, thank you so much for joining us. Happy Christmas. Thanks, guys. Yeah. See you soon. <laughs>